Carol is going to give us an overview of native shrubs. So Carol, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes. So, so native shrubs have, um, you know, as, as beautiful and showy as the camellias are, um, the native uh, shrubs are also very beautiful. And the next slide, please. Um, so you might pick a native, um, again, because they are beautiful, but, um, and they can accent the landscape. They can provide a border or a hedge. Um, they are really good foundation plants. And um, uh, I have chosen the ones that I'm going to show you mostly because they have an environmental function. So they either prevent soil erosion or um, habitat for birds and insects. Um, I am not going to show you any that um, necessarily provide food for human consumption, but um, there's they're such a big variety that um, you probably can think of what you really want and then find a plant, a native plant that, that can serve that purpose. So ne next slide, please. So um, I'm just going to go through a few examples, and they're all a little different for different, <laughs> picked them for different reasons. But the beautyberry uh, is one of the natives. It's actually native to Virginia's south and central coastal plain. It's, it's a smaller bush, so it's three to six feet high, six to eight feet wide. It has lavender flowers that um, are called cymes, so they have terminal buds um, that bloom. Um, between June and August. And then the clusters of the fruit are magenta. And you can see those are kind of really cool fruits. They are actually droops. So they have a pit inside and it's, it's like a peach. It's fruit with a little pit. Um, they tolerate um, clay, dry, rocky soil um, and salt. So you could kind of grow them near the, the roads perhaps if you um, had a, a, a driveway or something like that. Um, because it's a native plant, it has few really serious diseases and pests. That's, that, you know, the natives have a tendency to, to be a bit more hardy. Occasionally the deer come after them, but I really like them because they have um, over 40 species of songbirds um, are attracted to those fruits. And so if you're interested in birds um, and a really showy plant, um, this might be one for you. Next slide, please. Uh, the next one is the button bush, and um, this blooms in June, so a slightly different um, colored flower. It's a white, it's very low maintenance, um, full sun to part shade, um, and medium wet. Um, it's five feet to 12 feet high and will spread about four to eight feet wide. Um, this one is really interesting because it really stops erosion and you can grow it in really wet soil, very swampy places. Um, the little pin cushion type flowers um, mature into hard spherical fruits um, with little nutlets inside. So it's interesting um, kind of either with the flower or the, the seeds. Again, no serious diseases or insects. And um, unlike the beautyberry, which attracts songbirds, this is more of the hummingbirds and butterflies. So um, a little bit uh, of a different kind of look. Uh, the next slide, please. This is the inkberry or the Appalachian tea or gallberry. Uh, you can see those little dark purple berries. And this is, um, it's a very slow growing um, shrub. So if you if you wanted something to kind of you know, start small, stay small, uh, you might pick this one. It's very upright and round, um, about five to ten feet high. It's evergreen, so it's a member of the holly family, actually, um, and it grows in sandy um, soils at the edges of swamps and bogs. It's very salt tolerant as well and light to heavy soils. Um, I thought this one was really interesting too because the beekeepers in the area actually release bees from late April to early June to coincide with the bloom time for these, um, these shrubs. The, the honey is very highly rated from ink berries and um, they have a tendency to have a little bit more um, interest from the white-tailed deer, but they're rabbit resistant. Um, if you, they, they kind of grow by root suckers. So you'll, you do have to remove those if you see them growing. Um, and the one um, problem is they, they said, don't grow it too near your, your home because it actually has a tendency for flammability. And so if it gets really dry, 
um, and the, the bush gets really dry, you can, you can have some problems with fires. I guess it's more uh, of a worry out in the forest perhaps, but um, you know, certainly with some of the news stories that have been on lately with the mulch catching fire, uh, this, this might be a concern. So the next one, please. Sweet Spire. Um, this was, uh, it's another beautiful, beautiful uh, shrub. It grows on stream banks and wet pine barrens. It's about eight feet tall. The flowers are fragrant and um, grow on these arching racemes. Uh, it's, it's really beautiful, you know, with the flowers. The flowers are interesting, uh, very unusual, but the um, fall color from red to purple leaves is, is also really beautiful. So it's, it's, um, it's a very pretty showy bush, you know, most of the year. Um, again, um, part sun, shade, it tolerates wi wide soil conditions and pHs. Uh, they use it for erosion con control. And if you see it, you, you might be very interested in it. They say it's very rarely sold. So you actually have to, to kind of come upon it. Um, while the inkberry is kind of has high flammability, this one has very low flammability. It's known for that. So um, other reasons to, to, to look for this if you can find it and uh, really appreciate it um, in your garden. So the next slide, please. Witch hazel, uh, really a beautiful uh, plant as well. Um, it's less frequently found kind of in in the natural environment, but it's very widespread. So it grows over a wide um, area. It is the last native shrub to bloom in autumn. Um, you can see it's really beautiful, kind of this yellow, um, kind of frazzled, uh, very fragrant flowers. It's um, a much bigger tree, 15 to 20 feet high and 15 to 20 feet wide. So it's kind of a boxy um, in general. And it, it tolerates the heavy clay soil that we often have here um, and it can stop erosion. So if you if you have those problems in your backyard, you might consider one of these. Um, it has no serious pest problems. Sometimes it gets some Japanese beetles, but it's not a, a big problem. Obviously, witch hazel has medicinal uses um, and maybe just to be aware that it does attract flies and wasps. So. Um, just something to think about, but it is a, a really um, cool and beautiful um, kind of fall flower. And the last one, uh, this is the uh, common or Eastern nine bark. Um, it is very drought tolerant. It has beautiful showy flowers um, and the, the flowers um, make fruits that have red seed capsules and the bark is very papery and, and kind of molts off the plant. So again, it, it, it has beauty um, in, in many seasons. It looks different. It, it's, um, it, it's really very attractive. Um, again, one of the smaller shrubs, th three, 10 feet um, high and six to 10 feet wide. It flowers from May to June um, and it likes a rocky um, soil. So it's drought tolerant, it helps with erosion, and it doesn't mind clay. And again, it attracts a lot of pollinators and birds. So the next slide, please. Um, so things to consider if you're thinking of a native, think about the height and the width and how much pruning you're, you really want to do. Um, the requirements for light, soil, water, and um, the hardiness stones. Um, and then you know, visually, the, the flower times, the colors, the berries, the leaves and the bark can all be very different. Um, and often the, the native um, shrubs have, you know, the ability to, to be in our, in our soil right here um, in Northern Virginia. So, um, you know, if you're interested in birds and bees and other animals, kind of maybe choose for those. Um, but um, in general, most are insect and disease resistant. Um, so that's a big benefit. And uh, the next slide. Um, so a lot of my references are from the Virginia Cooperative Extension, which we're part of. Um, it has a beautiful article on, um, from Alex Nimieri. Uh, and um, if you go to the Master Gardeners of Northern Virginia, their website, they actually have a lot of demonstration gardens locally 
like very locally um, in the Arlington, Alexandria area. And you can see a lot of these native shrubs. Um, so we thank you for your, uh, for being with us tonight. <laughs>